Hi. At the beginning of part one I suggested that one reason for taking a fresh look at our identity is because there's an ancient body of wisdom that claims that we're not simply human. Outwardly we're human, but inwardly we're divine. However, I didn't ask you to believe this ancient wisdom, this claim about our identity. Instead, I rephrased it in modern terms, suggesting that what we are at centre is nothing like any of our regional appearances. In other words, what we are for ourselves at zero distance is the opposite of what we are for others, whatever their range. Then I invited you to look into your centre so that you could see for yourself what you are at zero distance. When we see our central reality, we discover that we're fabulously wealthy. Here's a way of illustrating our fabulous wealth. Hold your arms out in front of you so that you embrace your view out. Looked at from the outside, our embrace isn't very wide. How much can we hold between our hands? How much can we own? Even if we're rich, there's a limit. We don't own the stars. But the view from inside is totally different. The embrace of who we really are is infinitely wide. Between our hands we find the whole universe. There's nothing outside our being. We're wealthy beyond our wildest dreams. But what good is this wealth since it's private, not public? I can't do anything with my fields and rivers, my towns and cities, my oceans and stars. This is true. Our inner wealth cannot be exploited outwardly or put on show. But though we cannot spend our secret wealth or show it to others, though others can, of course, discover it within themselves, our own awareness of our infinite wealth confirms to ourselves the incomparable majesty and glory of who we are privately. Our innermost being is truly extraordinary. And when we say yes to this miracle, to this infinitely creative, rich, powerful and loving being that's within us, that we are, then its creativity, wealth, power and love flow into and bless our lives. Keep the door open to this beautiful mystery within you and you'll be guided and helped in countless ways. Can I prove that this is true? No. But it's my experience and the experience of many others who say yes to what we are from our own point of view. If you're willing to look at what you are and willing to say yes to what you find, I'm sure you won't regret it. In the remaining part of this film we'll do one more experiment to do with time. Then we'll look into how consciousness of our private self is a normal stage of human development. If we want to know what time it is, then we might look at our watches. I can see that it's now four o'clock. My watch tells me what time it is, there at that distance from me, there on my wrist. What time is it at zero distance, here at my centre, there at your centre? Well, let's have a look. Looking at my watch, I can see the second hand going round. The hands of my watch gradually mark out the passage of time. Movement, change and time go together. When I look here at my centre, I see no movement, no change, no time. Here at centre, I'm timeless. I'm looking from this timeless awareness here into time. And yet there's no dividing line between this timeless centre here and time there. Of course, I'm still aware that for others, I'm in time. Publicly, we're all in time, but privately, Time is in us, so although outwardly time will outlast us, inwardly it won't. Psychologists say that our deepest fear is death. When we see that at centre there's no time and therefore no death, we see that our deepest fear has no foundation. The fact that our innermost being isn't a product of time but is the source of time is a truly majestic condition to find ourselves in. No king or queen comes anywhere near the majesty of who we all are at centre.
However, being majestically above time, so to speak, doesn't mean that we ignore the world. For there's no dividing line between our eternal home and the world. Conscious of our timeless inner majesty, we're likely to find ourselves more involved in the world, not less.